Hello, bonjour, and welcome to the City of Thunder Bay's first ever Virtual Canada Day celebration. For full schedule virtual programming, head over to thunderbay.ca slash Canada Day. My name is Nicole, and I work with Parks Canada at Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area. I'm recording today from Thunder Bay, Ontario. I would like to acknowledge that my colleague and I are speaking to you from Robinson Superior Treaty Territory, the ancestral land of the Anishinaabe and home to Métis people. We honour the elders past and present. We respect their knowledge and we thank them for their stewardship of these lands that we all now share. Hello, bonjour. Welcome to Costa Canvas. My name is Abby and I work with Parks Canada at Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area. And today I'm recording from my backyard in Dorian, Ontario. Right behind me is Wolf River, which runs into Black Bay on Lake Superior. So thank you all for joining me as we lead up to Canada Day. I do know that we've been through some very challenging times in the past few months. So within the next half an hour of the program, I hope everyone has a chance to relax, connect to nature, and really express your creativity. So the program today, we're going to be talking about Canadian artists who've been inspired by the unique land and waters of Lake Superior. And along the way, we're going to be using a piece of paper and pencil to practice some of the techniques that they use and that you can use in your own landscape painting. If you don't have paint supplies, that's all right. You can use penciled crayons, you can use crayons, you can even use natural materials that you find from outside, like twigs and pine cones. This really is just a time to connect to your surroundings and express your creativity in a unique way. So have that piece of paper and pencil ready. We're gonna be practicing some of the techniques just as a warm up before you start your painting. And please remember to share with us. We would love to see what you create. So you can comment down below and tag us at Lake Superior NMCA. Did you know once established, Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area will protect over 10,000 square kilometers of the world's largest freshwater lake by surface area? Lake Superior alone makes up 10% of the world's available fresh water, so it's a very important body of water that we're protecting. And just like Lake Superior, the landscapes all around you can be a source of inspiration if you just allow yourself the time to look. Take a moment to get comfortable in your seat. Close your eyes and imagine a place that you connect with, a place that is familiar to you. And this place can be anywhere. It can be the forest, it can be a beach, it can be a green space near you. Imagine yourself there. The water, the land, the sounds and smells, the feeling, the whole sense of the place. What is your eye drawn to? Why do you think that is? How would you describe it in words? How would you describe it with a paintbrush through art? What stands out? Now open your eyes and with just a few lines, draw the place that you imagined. And it doesn't have to be too detailed, just a bare outline sketch. For me, I'm going to be drawing the mouth of the Wolf River as it flows into Black Bay. It's one of my favorite spots in the NMCA. So first I'm just gonna draw the banks of the river And then I'm going to draw the land across on the other side of the bay. And it's as simple as that. Remember, it doesn't have to have too much detail. It's just an outline drawing. And you can pause the video here and take as much time as you need. And join us back here once you're ready. Now keep that close by. You're going to have a lot of time later to add in more detail to it as we go. When approaching landscape art, it's a really great first step to just focus, as we just did, on the whole sense of the place. When we're using art using the land, we're almost bound into a deeper connection. And it really offers as a reminder of the inherent beauty that exists all around us. So before we return to our drawings, I'm going to send you over to my colleague Nicole, who is going to tell you about some of the artists who've been inspired by Lake Superior scene. As Abby described, the North Shore of Lake Superior is a beautiful and special place of vast open waters, rugged coastlines, and a rich cultural history. For as long as people have been here, this lake has challenged, humbled, nourished, and inspired. I'm going to tell you about a handful of artists who traveled here and made a significant contribution to the history of Canadian art. 
William Armstrong, the Group of Seven, and Yvonne Hauser. Each of these artists expressed these northern landscapes in unique ways through their painting. And we will focus on three strategies that they used and that we can use in our own art. From William Armstrong, we can consider how to add a subject to our painting, to tell a story and create a more interesting and engaging composition. From the group of seven, we can practice engaging with our senses to connect to the landscape while painting. And from Yvonne Hauser, we can practice and experiment with using complementary colors to make something really stand out. Earlier, Abby asked you to make a simple landscape drawing. As we progress through the program, she will show you how you can add these three elements to your outline. Are you ready? We'll jump right into the year 1859. This is when William Armstrong first set eyes on Lake Superior. He was a civil engineer accompanying surveyors on an exploration of the Great Lakes. But he's remembered best for his dramatic paintings of Canadian landscapes. His early images of Lake Superior, they're more than just landscapes. They're an historical document of the early way of life in this period, including indigenous culture, the fur trade, shipping and mining. They tell us a story about people working and adapting to life on this majestic lake in a changing economy. Armstrong's paintings draw us in. They engage our curiosity, our desire to know more. So let's go back to Abby, who will guide you in adding an engaging subject to your line drawing. Let's go back to the dr line drawing you started. Let's try and add something to give an element of human interest. Something that tells a story and makes your picture more interesting and engaging. And it doesn't have to be true to the place. You could add a canoe, a cabin, a loon. You could even add a sea monster. I'm going to be adding a kayak. Um, kayaking is one of my favorite ways of enjoying beautiful Lake Superior. So this is my element of human interest I'll be adding. So you can pause the video here and give yourself some time to draw out something that might make your drawing a little bit more engaging. And then we'll meet back with Nicole who will tell us about our next artist. Thanks Abby. Well, painters like William Armstrong spent the last part of the 19th century and early 20th century projecting European painting styles on Canada's landscapes. In the early 1900s, a group of young artists broke with these conventions. They sought a personal connection to nature and experimented with bold new ways of expressing Canada's landscapes. Landscapes they saw as dramatic, rugged, and wild. They called themselves the Group of Seven, and this year marks the 100th anniversary of their first formal exhibition in Toronto. In their pursuit of authentic Canadian landscapes, they've traveled ever northward from their home base to Algonquin, Muskoka, Georgian Bay, and Algoma, arriving on the North Shore of Lake Superior in 1921. They fell in love with the dramatic beauty of this place and returned seasonally for the next 10 years. Some of their most iconic paintings are from this area. You can see how Lauren Harris loved uncluttered simplicity and used light to evoke a spiritual quality. In A.J. Casson's October North Shore, we see bright, bold colors and moody clouds. Lake Superior's dramatic skies and rich colors are again emphasized in Carmichael's snow clouds and in Arthur Lismer's October on the North Shore. But what stands out to you in these paintings? What immediately draws your eye? And why do you think that is? The artists did not paint exactly what was in front of them, but rather what the landscape was making them feel. They exaggerated the forms they saw to try to capture the essence of the landscape. The group members often traveled together, camping in remarkable locations and hiking out each day to complete sketches on site. These sketches were the only documentation of the landscape they had when they returned to their home studio to paint. The rest would be up to the artist's imagination. So let's return now to Abby, who will guide you in trying to evoke that feeling of place in your sketch. 
Thank you, Nicole. A technique that we can learn from the group of seven is to really engage our senses and to try to express the entire experience of the landscape. So you can put yourself in one of the group of seven shoes. Imagine yourself visiting this amazing, beautiful place and you're going back to your home studio and you have to try and paint that. How would you express what you just experienced? Pick up your pen or pencil and your line drawing. Reconnect. Imagine that place at the beginning of the program. What did you see? What did you hear or smell or feel? Were there waves crashing? Could you feel the wind on your skin? Did you feel a sense of peace or awe? How can you communicate that in the whole, the whole sensory experience? Take a moment, remember there's no wrong ways of doing this, and draw out what to you reflects the feeling of being there. In my scene, I picture a gentle wind on the lake with soft buoyant clouds and cedar trees towering over me. So in my drawing, I'm going to be adding fluffy swirly clouds to communicate that. And some trees as well, just to communicate that sense of movement. So I'll have the trees leaning into the water. And there, so you can take a moment, pause the video, and then we will join Nicole, who will talk about our last North Shore artist, Yvonne Hauser. Like her fellow artist, the Group of Seven, Yvonne Hauser wanted to break from the constraints of traditional art. She first came to the North Shore of Lake Superior eight years after Lauren Harris made the region famous to capture the rugged beauty of the landscape in her own way. As a female artist in a time when women's work was not considered equal to men, Hauser brought her own personal interpretation to the landscape and left her mark on the history of Canadian art. Many of her most famous paintings depict Northern Ontario villages, including Rossport. And what stands out to you in her paintings? What draws your eye? One thing her paintings are recognized for is her lively, bold use of color. And something really interesting you may have noticed in Evening Nipigon River is her use of only two colors. But why only two? Let's return to Abby, who will give us some insight on Hauser's intriguing use of color. Hauser used what we call complementary colors. This basically means to use the opposite colors on the color wheel. And by using complementary colors, it helps to create high contrast in your painting or your drawing. So you can use them when you want something to stand out. So what do you want to stand out in your drawing? Think about the colors you would use. What colors do you see in your landscape? For example, if you're looking at a tree right now, what colors do you see beyond green? For my drawing, I'm going to be using purple and yellow. I'm going to be using yellow for my kayak because in real life my kayak is yellow. And then I'm going to be using purple for the sky to help my kayak stand out. And then I'm also going to use it in the water just to balance it all out. And there you go. So you can pause the video here. Uh, this is the last technique and then we'll return uh, to the rest of the program. You've now practiced three great techniques that you can apply to your painting. When you begin your painting, I really encourage you to experiment with some of the techniques that William Armstrong used, the Group of Seven, and Yvonne Hauser. So when you start your painting, think about what details you can use to add human interest or make your painting more engaging. Think about um, this whole sense of the place, how you can apply that to your painting, and how you can use colors to really make your painting stand out. Each of the artists we've talked about today share their own unique message about Lake Superior through their art. But the whole field of landscape art has this underlying message to really reconnect with nature. And right now that feels more important than ever. As we practice physical distancing to keep ourselves and others safe, some of us are not able to get out to experience the places that we love. But we can remember, we can imagine, and we can connect in creative ways. 
If you're at home, you can use a photo of a place that you love. You can use Google Street View to view any place in the world. You can use your memory. You can go into your backyard and draw what captures your attention the most. Or if you can get out, step out and connect with a natural place. Before you go, I'm going to send you off with just a quick demo of a technique um, that lots of landscape artists use for landscape painting um, and a technique that some of the Group of Seven members have used as well. We will begin with your backwash. Your backwash is used to separate the background from the foreground to emphasize the tones and values of the painting, which basically means the darker to lighter colors and shades. I chose a warm yellowish orange in this picture to contrast the blues and purples I plan on using in my foreground. The next thing comes your outline. At this point, you can outline what you are painting or drawing to give you a good idea of what, thing, what will be where. Uh, then we will add in your darker shades. So you may notice the darker shades and lighter shades in all Group of Seven and Yvonne Hauser paintings. This is a process of layering which helps emphasize depth in your landscapes. Begin with your darker colors and gradually move into your lighter colors. So in mine, I began with a dark purple and then painted spots where I wanted my painting to be the darkest. And then from there, we'll move into the lighter shades. So once you have added your darker layers, begin introducing white to your palette. And this is a time where you can experiment with different shades and begin layering your piece to your desire. And try using bright and bold colors and long and short brush strokes. Really experiment with it. And finally, just continue this process until you're happy with your piece. Uh, th and this is just one technique. You are totally welcome to paint in any style you want. With those techniques in mind, I invite you to grab your paint supplies and find a comfortable spot. If you're having troubles getting started, just put one mark on the canvas and see where it takes you. Remember when you begin your art piece that this is a time for you to relax and connect to a natural place. And I really encourage you all to experiment with some of the techniques that we learned in our line drawings, and most of all, have fun with it. So thank you all for joining us as we celebrate Canada Day and getting creative and connecting to landscapes all around us. I hope that you had fun learning these new art skills and I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Thank you, Abby, for showing us art techniques, the same used by a few well-known Canadian artists to capture the spirit of Lake Superior, to connect to landscapes near and far, the places we love, and the green spaces that may be just outside our window. I hope you've been inspired to come visit Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area in person. We miss you and can't wait to offer programs like this to you in person to celebrate and connect to this magical lake. So stay connected. Follow us on social media or check out our website at pc.gc.ca for more information about events like this one and information on how to register once we begin to offer in-person programs again. We would love to see your landscape and nature-inspired art. Share it with us by posting it in the comments and tagging us at Lake Superior NMCA. And tell us, what location did you choose? Do you have a name for your painting? Would you like to see more programs like this? And where would you like to go next? Happy Canada Day, everyone. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Merci. Thank you for joining Parks Canada and celebrating Canada Day. At seven o'clock tonight, join the giant quiz for trivia night. Test your family and friends knowledge with some good old Canadian and City of Thunder Bay history in celebration of our city's 50th anniversary. Register by emailing culture at thunderbay.ca. Follow Thunder Bay Culture and Events on Facebook for video updates. Canada Day is presented by Ontario Power Generation.